Hey Vlad here from DevInsideU.com. Welcome to another video in the book review series. Today we're talking about functional programming in Scala, also known as the Red Book. Ooh, let's get right to it. The Red Book came out in 2014 and it quickly became the de facto red pill for functional programming in Scala. The work on the second edition started just a couple of months ago and it will bring full coverage of Scala 3. I'm recording this video in the beginning of October 2021 and it's supposed to come out somewhere in the summer of 2022. The book is written by Paul Chuzano and Runa Bjornsson, two longtime members of the Scala community who were pushing functional programming so far that even Haskell was not enough and so they decided to create their own language. They call it Unison, and it's very different from any other programming language that you have ever encountered, but this video is not about Unison, and the book doesn't touch it either. Functional programming in Scala is slightly north of 300 pages long. It is divided into four parts, which contain 15 chapters in total. It's for people who want to learn functional programming and either happen to be already familiar with Scala or have the ability to pick up a new language fast. It is not an introductory book to Scala, even though I have seen it being recommended to beginners many times on the internet. Quite frankly, I disagree with this recommendation. In fact, the very first paragraph in the book states, and I quote, this is not a book about Scala. This book is an introduction to functional programming, a radical principled approach to writing software. We use Scala as the vehicle to get there, but you can apply the lessons here into programming in any language. As you work through this book, our goal is for you to gain a firm grasp of functional programming concepts, become comfortable writing purely functional programs, and be able to absorb new material on the subject beyond what we cover here. Furthermore, they state very early in the book, and I'm paraphrasing this time, that Scala is not a functional language since it permits many constructs that would not be acceptable in a functional program. For the purposes of the book, the existence of these constructs in Scala is simply ignored. And so it's a pretty balanced mix between introduction to functional programming, functional theory, and even category theory. Even though throughout the book, the authors make a continuous effort to hide category theory from the reader. Even though there is a lot of code in there with awesome illustrations, explanations, and exercises, I don't feel comfortable calling it practical. Don't get me wrong, I'm not claiming that it's a pile of ivory tower nonsense. It's actually quite the opposite. It's just that if you're looking for a practical guide, there are other books that focus even more on the practical side of things. In fact, I'm going to be reviewing some of them very soon. Sneak peek, those books lack a little bit in the theoretical department, so pick your poison. Now, the book doesn't try to sell you functional programming. Instead, it's a deep dive into the essence of it. It shows you the benefits of thinking functionally, and if you've ever wondered why so many people evangelize functional programming, well, the book has the answers you seek. All you need to do is take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Follow me. The first part of the book is an introduction to functional programming, as you can imagine. If you've already been exposed to functional programming in any shape or form, this part will simply fill in some holes in this puzzle, but ultimately won't offer anything revolutionary. On the other hand, if you're a total beginner, you will feel as comfortable as a child being carried by its mother. The second part of the book is the most interesting one, in my opinion, since it shows functional design, and as some of you might know, I'm a big fan of architecture. Functional programming, especially typed functional programming, is an architecture dream. It allows you to encode a lot into the core of your application and not even worry about how you will implement it later. I loved every bit of it. The third part of the book is where things get tricky. In fact, the entire book felt sort of like a swimming pool to me. All of a sudden you find yourself at the deep end of the pool and you have no idea how you got there. I felt like the transition could have been a little bit softer, but I have to admit that I haven't done the exercises and I definitely should have. In any case, the third part is the fulfillment of the ancient functional programming promise. The ability to build complex functional programs by composing simpler ones. In this chapter, all the necessary tools are introduced that happen to come from category theory. We're talking about functors, applicatives, monoids, monads of course, and many others. The fourth chapter is the one that will make you question whether you should have taken the blue pill. It gets into modeling side effects with the IO monad and even incremental side effects with the purely functional streams. Streams are mind-bending in any shape or form, but they become mind-melting in their functional flavor, especially in an eagerly evaluating language like Scala. Ironically, using them is pretty straightforward, it's just that implementing them is very tough. We did this at the end of my homegrown collection series 
series and let's just say that I wouldn't want to do this again. So yeah, the first half of the book is easy going and the second one, well, let's just say don't be surprised if you end up rereading it several times. As already mentioned, what I really liked about the book is the second part about functional design. It was really nice. What I didn't like on the other hand is the following. At the time I read the book, which was at the time when it came out, I was not completely sold on functional programming since at the time I was working for a company that had much bigger problems. So from my perspective, functional programming was simply solving problems that I didn't have. Because of this attitude at the time, I disliked the statement that was made at the beginning of the book. And it's also the one that I mentioned in the beginning of this video. I was questioning the practicality of functional programming in a language that permits so many non-functional constructs like mutability, exceptions, or even eager evaluation. However, over time my opinion changed and I don't dislike the statement any longer. I can see clearly now. Alright, now since this is the first book in my book review series that I do not find too long, I really wish that I could give it a 10 out of 10. However, I still find this jump between the two halves of the book a little bit too heavy. Maybe it will get improved in the second edition. So for now, I'm gonna give it a 9.5 out of 10. It's a nitpick though. I'm pretty sure that I would have felt more comfortable had I actually done the exercises. So yeah, I definitely recommend this book. The first edition is around 24 bucks and the second edition is 10 bucks on top of that, but it's not out yet. Fun fact, the first edition even has an audio version, which is Probably tricky for a book that contains so much code, so if you've actually listened to it, please let me know in the comments below if it's any good. One last thing that I would like to mention that is only vaguely related to the book is the fact that the same as this book, the functional programming principles in Scala Coursera course by Martin Gondersky himself is not an introduction to Scala, so please stop recommending it to Scala beginners. Don't get me wrong, it's an amazing course, but the same as this book, its purpose is to introduce you to functional programming not to Scala itself. Cool, I hope you enjoyed this book review and I see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from devinsidey.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you, and if you learned something today, consider supporting me on GitHub sponsors or Patreon, whichever you prefer, and let's watch my videos weeks and sometimes even months before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.